In this video, we're going to cover some hardware and software information that we should keep in mind when we're programming in C. And I've just got some slides for this. I think it'll help um, make it more clear. So the first thing that we want to understand is memory. So in our computers, um, our memory is consists of an ordered list of memory cells. And these cells can contain data. You know, we're, we're going to fill them in with data as our program executes. Um, but this is also where our, the information to run our program is stored in memory cells as well. So to make this more concrete, here is a figure from the textbook. So this would be sort of a, oh, I'm just going to zoom out a little bit here so we can see better. So this would be, say, our computer with very little memory only has a thousand memory cells. We said that they were ordered, and here they're ordered 0 to 999. And here are just some examples of what these memory cells contain. Um, say the number negative 27.2 or the character H. So actually these memory cells are groups of what we call bytes and a byte as you see here is traditionally 8 bits and a bit is a binary number so either 0 or 1. So when we have our 8 bit bytes that means that each byte can store two to the eighth different uh, pieces of information, right? So if we just had one bit, we could store only two things, zero or one. If we have two bits, we can store four things. We can store zero, zero, we can store zero, one, we can store one, zero, and we can store one, one. So that's how we get that there are two to the eighth um, different things that we can store in an 8-bit byte. And so something like a character um, is stored in a single byte, but when we start using integers and other data types, those are going to require more than one byte to store, because if we only could store, uh, if we only use one byte for integers, I think I think 2 to the 8th is 1 to 128. We could only store 128 different integers, and then we couldn't store anymore. But we'll talk a lot more about that when we get into data types. So another big idea here is these layers of abstraction. So our computer hardware, really, it's just these switches on and off, these bits. But then we abstract them to bytes. We abstract those bytes to things like cares and ints um, and other data types. And that's how we're able to actually write computer programs is all these layers of abstraction. Our computers have two types of memory, um, RAM, random access memory, and ROM. Um, ROM we can't actually change. So in this course, we're always, when we talk about memory, we're always talking about RAM. Um, you could also have secondary memory, things like hard drives, uh, flash drives, DVDs. Additionally, our computer has a central processing unit, um, and this is what actually runs our programs and also runs the operating system. And then, as you would imagine, we have input and output devices. But the big take homes here are really about memory. So we talked about hardware. Um, the first really important software that we interact with every day is an operating system. So for example, I'm using a Mac operating system and in this class we're going to write our programs on a Linux operating system. Another piece of software are 
the applications that uh, we use and that we write. So like the programs that we're going to write in this class. And then programming languages are also software. Um, at the lowest level, the machine language is what communicates um, with the hardware, and that's written in binary. So for me personally, as a computer science educator, researcher, and even when I was in industry working as a data scientist, I really never interact with machine language or even assembly language, which is sort of one layer up. It's not written in binary, but um, still very low level. What we usually as computer scientists use are high level languages. And high level languages are things like C, um, like Python, like Java, um, anything that you're writing in human readable text is a high level language. So how do we actually go from uh, something that a human can read, a human can write easily, like C, to something that actually talks to the hardware? Um, well, the process uh, we will see it has a couple steps. So like I said, we're going to write our source code just in um, human readable language. It compiles, um, and after that, it's linked, and finally, we have an executable file. So there's a figure from the book that just shows this process and I think is maybe a little more clear. So like we said, we've got our source file um, that we write using a text editor. It is compiled into machine code. And at this point, um, the compiler may find syntax errors. Um, and at that point, it just tells us we have errors. Or maybe it doesn't find any errors. And what we get is an object file. file. And at this point, um, then the linker is going to combine separate object files um, to finally produce our executable file. So in this class, we're not really going to talk about the linker, um, but I feel like it's nice to understand that what's going on. We're going to go from our source file to our executable file. And then finally, when we actually execute it, um, we might input some information and we see some result. So as an example, we could actually see um, what this process looks like. So I actually have a nice bash command. Um, I can show you how to set this up that will just run that SSH command for us. Um, but I need to log in and ooh, I'm going to turn on my key casting so that you can see what I'm doing. So let's see, I just logged into the server. I have my uh, directory that I'm tracking on Git that I would put all my, um, all of my work to turn in for this class, but just as an example, I'll just um, create a C file in my executable file outside of that directory because this isn't work that I need to turn in for the class. So I'm going to use Vim to create a C file. I'm just going to call it example.c and I'm just going to write some code here. Doesn't matter if you don't know what's going on. Um, this is just so that we see the uh, compiler doing its work. So what am I going to do here? I'm just going to make an integer a. I'm going to 
sign it to be 10 and I always need a return statement so I'm going to put that in here. So now let's take a look. So I see that I have my example.c text file, right? This is just this is just text. So let's go back here. So this example.c is a source file. It's in it's a text file. Now I'm going to use the compiler to actually get an executable file. We we kind of this step is hidden from us. Um, if I just call unless I tell it to not run the linker. So to compile, and we'll, we're going to learn a lot more about this, but to compile, I use GCC, and then I'm going to say, what should my output file be? It's going to be example. I'm just going to call it example. And I'm going to say, this is an option to say, uh, give me all the warnings. And then I'm going to say, what what file do what source file do I want you to compile? And I want you to compile example.c. Now I just run enter to run this. And the compiler is actually giving me a warning. Um, it's saying that I'm not actually using my variable a. Well, that's fine. I could still run this, um, but nothing happens. Um, but say I wanted to get the, get rid of this warning. Um, by actually doing something with A. Let me print it. So I'm going to open up my file and in order to print A I'm going to call uh, print format and I believe this is how I print A and I need a semicolon at the end here. And a nice thing is that here Vim is actually telling me that I don't have printf defined and so I need to uh, put that in here. Oops. All right, so now I actually am gonna do something. So I'm going to, with my a variable, so I'm going to compile it again, and now I don't get any warnings. So this linker, if I had multiple files, um, as we will, as we're writing more and more complicated programs, we're actually going to have more and more files that um, we might have code in separate files and the linker is what um, puts those all together into our executable file that can actually be run. But the big thing to get here is that example.c is a source file and after I run my compiler I get an executable file and let's just take a look like what does that even look like right well totally unreadable for us right the executable file is not for humans the executable file is for the computer but I run it um, using this syntax oh and we can see that since I added that print we now see uh, the output of 10. So I hope that clarifies a little bit um, about the process of creating an executable program. And I think, yep, this is everything that we have for this video.